Isn't it kind of silly that people think glasses make you look smart because it just meant that you read a lot of books, but that's not why you need glasses. Right. Why? Well, well, I think it's because in like the movies, the characters that are always, always like, like the loser nerds are wearing glasses. When did that start, though? Did the movies start that or was it before, like in the 1800s, people were wearing glasses? Oh, I don't know. I think it's the movies. Sorry. I can't tell if I'm about to like have a trial or not. Or oh, shake your pants. Go, hope not. go on, on the toilet. <laughs> And that's think, like, do I need to birth it? I don't think it's like that. <laughs> yeah, it just falls into the water. <laughs> I have a cryptic pregnancy. You're hardly showing. A cryptic ectopic. Yeah. No, cryptic. Oh, cryptic? Yeah, don't fucking laugh at me, bitch. What well, they said encrypted. No, cryptic pregnancy. What's cryptic she had a WhatsApp, It's when you're baby. pregnant and you don't know, and then all of a sudden you just oh. have a baby. Oh my god, there used to be a show. It was like, I didn't know I was pregnant. Oh. Yeah. Could you imagine? An like, encrypted baby? Cryptic. Like, cryptic. it's like, you have to, like, decipher the code? I don't know, but yeah. it's so crazy <laughs> that, like... You can just an eight pound child will come out of you when you like didn't know. I know. Where, I kind of don't was believe it? that that's a thing. I feel like I it's people who don't show it all. Yeah, or, no, yeah. how, do real listen, thing? how do you not listen to you're your? You're not allowed to and... talk about it. You're not women. <laughs> yep. I know. Our uh, bodies, our choice. You know? <laughs> I feel like I'm like would be in touch with my body where I knew something was wrong. How? But it doesn't seem like then they're that in touch with like no, their I body. No, I think that's the whole point. That's why it's cryptic. <laughs> It's a mystery, baby. Yeah. Matt says he would be in tune with his body knowing something was wrong. Then why didn't you go to the hospital when you were... Because I I was gaslit. Everybody was gaslighting me. Oh, everyone else's opinions matter more than your own in tuneness with your own body. I will say, that is a a point. You are being gaslit by a lot of people. By Mike, by Patricia... And you guys were the only people that... Hold on. Uh, I did not gaslight you. Yeah, but if your yes, body you was telling you Matt, something... you told me your symptoms. We were watching I, Dragon Ball Z and I'm on your bed going, don't you think this is weird? And you go, and I Googled these you symptoms. Know, buddy, I think you're overreacting. Man. I don't think that's I, gaslighting. I think it's just like undermining. I Googled the symptoms and you told me the symptoms. And I even did a test for appendicitis, which was press on your stomach and see if there's pain. And I pressed all over your stomach and you said, no, that doesn't hurt. I just feel Mine didn't sick. hurt either. And you were like, we still got to record tomorrow. So don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> we got two episodes. Okay. We got two so, episodes. We've got a crying Aaron video. Buddy, you better, you better okay. be fucking like, okay. It's okay. I sat with you at that godforsaken Kaiser and you're hospital. Like, this is yeah. going to be hilarious. You're going to be on a plane and you're going to be fine. And like, yeah, I'm trying to be optimistic, not okay. gaslighting you. Yeah. I'm I don't done. think it's Are gaslighting. Are you fucking kidding me? Sit your ass down, Mike. But also, to be fair, like, <laughs> at the end of the day, no matter what anyone says to you, it's still your responsibility. So, yeah, so if back to the bi- women who were pregnant and didn't know they were pregnant. Your body, your choice. Yeah, it's still their responsibility, still like but it's a still a crazy like, thing. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no. Is, like, is, my, is it just me or is my uterus <laughs> big? Maybe filled. Or feeling the kicking of a baby. Period. No, it's crazy. No, the whole, that's the whole thing. They just don't know. It's a real are they, medical thing. Are they... No, I feel no. like some people literally do not show. Like, that's when you don't know. Yeah. Some people just don't show. And it's just sad where people have to hide their pregnancy from people because they're too scared to tell people that they're pregnant in their life. That is the saddest they're thing not on hiding earth. It. People have to, go, like, what? The, I'm not talking no, about people who hide it. Some people, some people are it. in denial, though. Some people like, just, no, not even denial. But they like, just don't know. Yeah, but also they, maybe they did have suspicions and they just were like, they wanted just to think that they weren't. And they like, I didn't know because they didn't know. want to tell. But if you've ever watched it, they explain they like how they didn't know. Yeah, you're right. You're like, I've never had pains. Like, I've never felt different. I drink. <laughs> you don't show. Like, I don't yeah. show at all. And then one day. What's the number one best selling book of all time? <laughs> the Bible. The Bible. You know what number two is? Um, Harry Potter. The Art of the Deal. Donald Trump. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> do you know the number two? No, I don't. Oh, Donald do you want Trump me to always, look? Donald yeah, look Trump it always says it's the Art of the Deal. I bet it's the Quran. He does. He that, like he's like number one best selling book. My favorite book in the Bible. Number two, the Art of the Deal. Donald Trump. <laughs> Or it's the Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown. No, it's I, the Quran or Harry Potter. No, it's going to be some classic. The second best. The, it book. is the Quran. It is the Quran. And then the yeah. next is the Little Red Book. Quotations from Chairman Mao. Mao's and what website are you on? It's just what's the highest selling book of all time? QAnon. <laughs> MarkManson.net. Mark Manson. That's the guy that wrote the subtle art of not giving a. F- the oh, Lord of him. the Rings. Yeah, it says the Bible, the Quran, the Little Red Book, Don. Quixote. Yes. Selected articles of Chairman Mao. Maybe the Tale, Tale of Two, two cities, cities. Lord of the Rings. That's it Scouting was the best for of Boys. Times. The Book of Mormon. The Little Prince. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is number eleven. Is that the first one? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Alice in Wonderland, number 13. I don't know what any the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, 15. Oh. What about oh. the giver? Is the giver on there? Uh no, it only goes to 15. Uh-huh. Giver's not on there. Okay. You know the giver though? That was a book. Were there books that you always saw as a kid? Like you saw the cover of it, you go, that looks stupid. And then yeah. you like heard about it later on, you're like, that's what that book was about? The but you giver- never read it in school? No, we never read it in school, but oh. it was always on the shelves and mm-hmm. I would see it as a kid. But I didn't realize it was like this cool sci-fi world. Where, like, <laughs> it was like, like the, the Hunger color, Games yeah. kind of a situation. Because it, it was like an old man and he was like black and white. And yeah. there was like beard. It looked like some, I don't know, just stupid tale like in the well, woods. What's the, what's I read the story it in fifth that? grade. Yeah, and we popcorned not... it around the classroom. The <laughs> that would, corn reading. That would yeah. just piss me off. I'd be like, guys. No, it was like the worst, like just being like, he's going to call me. He's going to call me. And then yeah. like you don't know how to say a word. I know. And then I like everyone never, giggles. I, hate it. I don't like, I can't read on a podcast. Like I get too like, <gasps> too um out of breath. <laughs> I, if it was ever po- like reading in a circle, though, I would like you know, and you read a page, you read a page, you read a page. You find I would, what reader page you're gonna, and then you don't pay would, attention. To I it. would yeah, not pay attention and just read mine to prepare, <laughs> so that when it came to me, oh, I they was, would like tell you. Yeah, like you read in a circle, so you so, know like, what page you're going. Like, you would you, only do you, a paragraph. Yeah, it's like you do a paragraph, you do, and so I would yep. be well, like while you guys are reading, yeah. I'm like you rehearsing. You're yeah, I'm rehearsing. But then once you like came to a word you don't know, where you like fuck, 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 fuck. No, I mean I'm still a pretty good reader, I think. Uh, but it, I was an impressively good reader because I would always wear glasses. Rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because the glasses. Yeah, the glasses. My glasses. Uh, what, what What's the giver about again? The giver what's is the story? it's set like in this. I don't know if it's on Earth or it's like apocalyptic future, but pretty much it's like this most idyllic, uh, perfect community where Everybody, everyone has equal everything, right? Uh, yeah. Equal everything. But like uh, there's a big when you turn eighteen. I'm pretty sure like you get this big. Uh, personality test or they almost yeah. like sort you into what your role will be you will be a veterinarian you will be this person yes, yes. and then it all get, and the kid doesn't get picked and it's all down to the final him and he thinks that he's messed up something's wrong but he gets picked as the giver right I remember that. and he know, goes and like lives with the i've never even read the book <laughs> oh my god i don't remember that i just know all. like the gist I read of it, it in fifth grade that's why yeah. i don't remember it's kind of like in the whole world's also, <laughs> black and white and he yeah, starts bringing a little bit of color to the world oh Jonas. <laughs> but like, yeah, truly the book. <laughs> like, yes. I remember See? having this in my backpack. Yeah, <laughs> that doesn't look like a fun book for a child. Yeah, yeah. it's like, what's this old guy doing? And then when someone was explaining the plot to me one time, I'm like, that's what that book is? That sounds dope. Yeah. I'm like, Do- is this about God? <laughs> what was the first chapter book? Oh, oh God. God. I, have no idea. I feel like it was Junie B. Jones. Oh, yeah. For Junie sure. B. Jones is a bit of a bit. Oh. <laughs> That child yelled. I that, don't remember. And that book was half all in caps. <laughs> Love that. She was like, she knew herself. She was speaking so in YouTube yelling clickbait. At? She yeah, yelled at yeah. her parents. She yelled at her teachers. She yelled at her friends. She was a Karen. Junie B. Jones. She would just stop and <laughs> What was and her deal? Yell. Why was she yelling at everybody? Um, Because she was a, it's basically Junie B. The B stand for bitch. Bitch. <laughs> oh. Junie Bitch Jones. And she would this just realize you? when she was a bit of a bitch and would tone it back and goes, I'm sorry. Wait, really? <laughs> I ever read I'm pretty those. sure that was oh. the plot of every book. Junie, Junie B. Jones. Jones. Do you remember the Babysitters Club books? Of oh, yes. They were really those aesthetically were for, yeah. like. I remember I was like pretending to read them. I would never read them, but I'd be like, yeah, oh, I'm really? reading them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I Did have, you watch the show? I have the Babysitter <gasps> Club movie on VHS. Course. I do. Do you still have it? Um, yeah, it's a very weird kind of fucking Maybe up I film. did read these. I used to read so many of those like series books when I was a kid. Like, like Animorphs. Captain Underpants. Ca- oh. oh my god. Captain <laughs> Underpants, Dave Pilkey. I had every single one. Re- I, I like used to memorize the Captain Underpants books. Who were the, like, who were the two boys in Captain Underpants? I can't Underpants. remember now. I couldn't tell you. But there I and like George. and they had the uh, the flip o rama. Yes. So there would be like a, it's like a one page animation that you just flip back and forth and it's like Guys going oh. like this, brilliant. But like Animorphs, did you ever read that? No. Uh, you know no Animorphs. Is? Yeah. I feel like we've talked, we talked about, about this. it on okay. the podcast. Yeah, we talked about this. Bailey School Kids. Oh, vampires don't teach gym or uh, uh, it was like werewolves go- don't uh, teach summer camp. It was like a less scary Goosebumps, oh. where it was a bunch of kids who like <laughs> Jews don't ride roller coasters. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Oh, I was like, geez. No, Mike and I the other day were, we're coming, coming up, up with, with like, like yeah. Different Bailey school kids. I don't. I've never even heard of that. I don't. There was think. a girl, Melody. There was another kid. It was basically like a group of whatever fifth graders, and each book it was like a anthology series, whatever. There would be 
oh, you know, werewolves don't coach girls basketball is the title of the, the book is werewolves don't coach whatever. And so they would think that in their town, there was an actual werewolf who was the coach of the team and they would like have like investigations and like try and break it through his house just whatever. gossip stirring up <laughs> gossip. these kids it was just a witch hunt and they would go through every single employee at the damn school <laughs> and be like is it just me or is her nose so big she might be a witch Ooh. <laughs> but then at the end it was like no mr johnson just is from lithuania and, really <laughs> <laughs> and he's really hairy and he's not a werewolf <laughs> Spoiler alert! Oh my <laughs> god! Every, every every episode or every oh book, oh my god, it would just be like, no, she's not a witch. <laughs> she's just ugly. Like, she just has yeah. long hair and a broom. <laughs> and I love she those. Sweeps. Also, the Magic Treehouse books. Oh yeah, oh. where Wait, like Bill and Annie, like, and they they would go into their Magic oh, Treehouse and they or they found an abandoned treehouse in the woods, and inside the treehouse were all these books. And when they would open up a book, they would go to the, the world. It would be like. Magic Treehouse, Night of the Ninjas. Ooh. Or it would be like That's magic, not magic School Bus. Magic Treehouse, uh, Walking with Dinosaurs. No. What? Ma not Magic School Bus. No, what I Magic Treehouse. Were... Mary Pope Osborne was the author. Did you guys read the Mary Kane Ashley books? Oh, wait. Mary Kane Ashley had books? Yeah. They were authors. I'm like, well, <laughs> like the adventures of Mary Kane yeah. Ashley in the like detective they were movies? books. Like basically they're movies, but books. Yeah, I think so. Oh. Yeah, I would uh, like, them. like the novelization of New York Minute or whatever. Prob I think so. There's no wait. There's book versions of their. I don't know what it, of it our was. Lips it are exactly sealed Paris. and passport to Paris. Oh yeah, Billboard I doubt Dad. it. No, I doubt those. Billboard ones. Dad. That'd be yeah. fun to read now. They were two. I think it was when they were like much younger and like uh, their cute little faces. We should read one for a book club. Yeah, <laughs> one of these anamorphs. Animorphs are great. I Why loved were the animorphs? series of unfortunate events. Oh, that by was Lemony big Snicket. For me. Oh. Is Lemony Snicket the name of the actual author? Or that's like his name. pen name. It's okay. like his stage it's, name. It's pen name. What? I also, what I will it's say, like jacuzzi. I think I had like yeah. every single Dr. Seuss book and I loved oh, reading those. Love Dr. Seuss. Because it's like you kind of get to like rap as a kid. <laughs> you know? One fish, You're two Eminem. fish, three yeah. fish. <laughs> Just uh, the only places kid. you'll go. <laughs> it, they, they were so great. Real like life okay, lessons. The Animorphs, there is a <laughs> alien species called the Andalite, okay? And they came with the Hork Bjorn <laughs> to uh, America. Crazy and... favorite genre. <laughs> is this written by L. Ron Hubbard? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think it's like K.A. Applegate. Okay. Um, Dianetics, speaking of him though, great book. I don't know if you guys have read Dianetics. <laughs> no! I think you made this joke the other day. Yeah, you? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. I don't remember what we talked about when we were talking about books in the one episode. Oh, we did. That's why That's yeah, what it was. we came yeah. up with this idea. Because I was like, or someone was like, like, save it for the book episode. Yeah, we should just do it. Yeah. Well, also a bunch of people requested this. Right. That was the whole thing. We what are, are we reading through... now? Let's do that. Bright Lights, uh, Big City by Jay McInerney. What's it called? Bright Lights, Big City. Oh. She he was got part of the, out of town. He was part of the literary <laughs> brat pack in the early 80s, along with Brett the Easton Ellis. Um... And it was just kind of like a novel for the MTV generation. Like everybody, like all of the young adults in the 80s were reading this book. Oh. Um, Matt's very into his 80s cocaine, Era. like yuppie books. Yuppie. How many books do you read a year? Uh, well, I would say I try to read one book a month. So I nice. aim for like 12, 12 books. Nice. This one's a quick one. Like I'm I've starting my 12th book. Of the year. Wow. Damn, girl. Well, you're reading like you're reading Quick Judy Beach. Bloom, like whatever. <laughs> I, I wish I was Colleen reading Hoover. Judy. Pretty much Judy Bloom. Yeah. Colleen no, they're like Colleen Hoover Hoover books minimum like three hundred pages. It's like cocaine. It's just like a line of just good <laughs> shit. Like, That's why they're so good. It is. On to the next That's why one. if you go to Barnes and Noble, there's like a book talk yeah. section, and there's just Colleen Hoover everywhere. Young adult, slay my life, or like Beach Read, or yeah. a Colleen Hoover book saved your life. Slay oh, my life. Oh, I have my life. Saved but my also, life. yes. This podcast is sponsored by Ghostbed. When it comes to creating a positive impact on your sleep, Ghostbed has got you covered. With over 20 years of experience, they have mastered the art of the perfect sleep experience. One of the things that sets Ghostbed apart is their commitment to quality. They don't cut corners when it comes to delivering the best mattresses. It's all about giving you the comfort and support you deserve night after night, which I think we can all appreciate because I don't know about you guys, I love my sleep. But that's not all. Ghostbed is a family owned business and their dedication shines through the quality of their best. From their signature and patented cooling materials that keep you cool and refreshed to their range of firmness options that cater to everybody, Ghostbed is designed with your well-being in mind. 
And here's the best part. Ghostbed offers a 101 night sleep trial, free shipping, and lightning fast delivery. Most orders ship within 24 hours. You can start enjoying the benefits of a good night's sleep in no time. Visit ghostbed.com today and discover the mattress that will transform your sleep and uplift your spirits. For a limited time, use code GOOD for 40% off your purchase site-wide. Again, that's code GOOD for 40% off your purchase site-wide. Thank you, Ghostbed. It's like, Erin, we could talk about stuff, too, if you're having problems. I don't know if a Colleen Hoover book. No, her books are like, the, it's the same plot in every book. There's just a terrible man, a good woman. He's, like, problematic and love, love, love. Yeah. No wonder they, you guys eat it up. Yeah. Oh, whatever. Well, no, she has a thriller one that I loved. Mm. Oh, Matt That's the it. one Verity? that Matt Verity. jacked off to. <laughs> 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 No, it was pretty. It was pretty steamy. <laughs> Let's just say that I didn't know those books got that dirty. Some of them yeah. do. Some of them are like no, they're whoa, dirty. What was the ones? That That's why. Also, like most of the books we read, like there's porn in it. Yeah. Yes. Smut. All y'all are reading porn, girls. That's all they're reading. What was the one that like came out? Fifty about Shades of Grey. Yes. Oh, I read all of those, and I was like eighteen. I remember going to someone's house one time, and they had a sister, and in the room of the sister was 50 shades of gray and i was like oh that's a book that everyone's reading but it had <laughs> rubber bands around the entire book so like you couldn't open it and i was like what huh? she was like ashamed to be reading it and like it was rubber like bands. there was just like rubber bands strapped around it's so, like her it like wouldn't accidentally fall open i guess those are good. those are steamy did you read them yeah of course and it's, it's just like bdsm and stuff yeah it was a big like mom phenomenal yeah no my mom was reading them and oh, then i would use no. her kindle See, like, there's a time and a place to, like, go read those books. Like, that's... Yeah, in bed in, by yourself. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Not, <laughs> on, the, not on the train. <laughs> like, see, could you imagine reading her... Colleen Hoover books sometimes, like, in public, and I'm like, what part are you on? Like... Oh, yeah. I, I mean, read them yeah, in public. <laughs> I feel like mo a lot of Colleen it's... Hoover books aren't, like, that heavy. Yeah, no, they're not, like, you're reading porn. Yeah. Like, but there, Fifty it, Shades of Grey is straight up, like, he, he yeah. did this and, and whatever. And yeah. that one like, that there's literally, like, a Red Room of Pain. Uh -huh. Oh, um, things, things you never, never got, got over. over. There's like, but I feel like it wasn't like that porny. It wasn't, but th there were like I was two scenes. It to be but way I was like, more. oh my god, yeah, <laughs> that would be embarrassing to read in front of somebody for sure. I read most of them in public because I love to read on a plane. Mm. Yeah, I feel like it's like such a great way to pass time. Yeah, it is. But like when best. I was reading that, I was like, thank God, no one's sitting next and to the me. The text is like kind of big. Yeah. It's funny to just like not funny, but like I feel bad sometimes seeing people read like certain self help books in public, and I'm just like, oh, I know because it's like, why yeah, are you that? yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good for you, but like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, that sucks that you need to be reading that. I was, but sitting... it's a book that I would read. Like, you know, if you ever see like a guy reading The Art of Seduction, you're just like, yeah, it's wait, like, mm, what on, is bro. the? Does, is that like a white book? Is that a really popular book, The Art of Seduction? Yeah, it's uh, uh teaches you what how to oh, seduce no, this people. Is not the one. Matt's like, what's it called? It's I mean, it's the guy Robert Greene. He also wrote the Forty Eight Laws of Power, the Forty Eight Laws of War. Okay. Um, the Forty Eight Laws of Power is his like most popular one, but he wrote a book called The Art of Seduction too, which is like, it's a intriguing title, but it's about the different ways that people can seduce other people. It's more of like a like a, a summary of like there's the co coquettish one. There's the uh, person who uses their vocabulary. There's the person who saves someone in distress. It's like a book about different types of seducers. It's not like, here's how to pick up chicks. <laughs> oh. It's like a study on different types of seduction. It's like an interesting read. It's really hard for me to read those like self-help books. Yeah, it's like, we're perfect. Like, we don't need any help. I'm like, give me to me just a guidepost. <laughs> yeah. I can get a cool little Bullet TikTok points. I can just scroll Literally, by. Literally, a little PowerPoint. Yeah. yeah, give me, yeah I give need me... a plot. Yeah, yeah, I basically only read nonfiction. Oh. It's so hard for me to read fiction. Why? Wait, but the Animorphs. Well, that, no, when I, when I, <laughs> the Animorphs? That, <laughs> still reading that was a biography. Uh, no, no. When that, I was a, I'm like, that's real? <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to read all that stuff. But I think once I got to like college, I just like wanted to learn more stuff and read more stuff. And I'm very interested in like the human brain and behavior and psychology. So that's kind of like all I like to read. Is oh. Have you ever read Left, the Left Behind series? No. What is that? I think you'd love it. What is that? Um. Anyways, why are you smirking? Yeah. What why is, is that? this like? None of us know what it's this like, is. It's one of like the biggest like Christian like oh. series, <laughs> and I just wanted people like who didn't know to listen to it and, and be, be like, like, "Ha ha, yeah, yeah like Matt's reading out. this." Yeah. 
Um, um, what was I going to say? Okay, so you love a nonfiction. Yeah, because I like to read. Do you watch a lot of TV? No, never. I like, I don't watch any shows. Okay, I think that's why, like, I'm like a big fiction girl. Mm. And I think it's because it's kind of like I'm watching a show. Yeah, yeah. Well, to this... be fair, some nonfiction I've read have felt like a documentary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying, like, there's anything wrong with it, but I think mm-hmm. that's just why I prefer. No, I'm saying, like, I, I yeah. understand because when I was reading, like, my weird nonfiction books, yeah. it felt like nonfiction is hard for me to be like, ooh, I can't wait to go pick up that nonfiction yeah. book and cuddle in bed and read. Yeah. And, like, You're just in it for the gossip. In. Yeah, I just, it's a plot. I just like to pick back up to see where the story's going. Oh, yeah. It's a its a faster river I want to Yeah, the Henrietta Lacks was really interesting because it felt like a crazy documentary. Like yeah. it genuinely was like crazy. I love that. Yeah. Or I Radium also, Girls. Radium, Radium Girls reads like fiction. Like it feels yeah. like you're reading a made up book. There's and there's a, a plot. It's really good. There's a thing in my brain, which I know I don't want to ruin reading for anybody. Oh, but when I read good. fiction, I'm just like, these are just a bunch of lies. Like, oh, this and... didn't happen. And I'm it's just a like, story. I know, but I'm just like, when I. I'm what about so... a mo- Do you think that about movies? No. No. Because I know that a movie is like art, and huh? I get that. I know. It's very <laughs> bizarre. But I think it's because I've read so many things that are nonfiction. So, like, here's. Intelligent? Yeah. Things that are intelligent. <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> like, educational. Like, when I think about reading something, I'm expecting to read the truth. Like, you know, this is. We did a study on uh, blah, blah, blah. And, like, this is how the brain works. And this is how. Uh, behavioral hacks for whatever and then like when i pick up a book and like jane was 20 years old living in cincinnati i'm like no sh- no she wasn't but it's fun it's like ooh, i know gonna have- I, need to get over it. Escape. I love when i read fiction books i love pretending like you get to be the director of the whole movie in your own mind as you're reading and visualizing mm-hmm. it which is so fun to do because you ever like You'll see an adaptation of a book you really liked. You're like, oh, that sucked. Like the movie version of it. Mm-hmm. Or you're watching a movie you're like, this stinks. I feel like you it's get like to most play creativity and you to get movies. to cast everybody in your own head. You get to figure, like when you read books. When we do book do club, put, we say, who would we cast? Yeah, yeah. And then you picture oh. that actor the whole time you're reading the book. And I love oh, I do thinking that of that the whole time. But that's, yeah. uh, what did I just read where they like cast someone to be the lead role? And then I was like, now I'm just going to picture this person the whole time, though. Oh. Like pre me getting to form my own made up person in my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember. Was it It Ends With Us? No, because I don't think she had been cast yet. But that is an awful casting. Yeah, it looks terrible so far. It's terrible. It's like a 23 year old, like cool hip girl. And they cast Blake Lively, who's like in her mid 30s. And like they're trying to like dress her Gen Z. And it's just like, it doesn't work. Really? She looks like um, someone said she looks like that professor in Harry Potter that like has the glasses and like crazy frizzy hair. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Frizzle? No. no. Yeah. <laughs> but same vibe, the yeah. Emma Thompson's. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I can't remember what her name is. Professor something. Oh, the, I don't really like see things in my head while I'm reading. I do like a little bit, but I, it's not, it doesn't look like a movie. Yeah. Same. Does it look like a movie to other people? I, yeah, I see a full. Yeah, I can't movie in my see, head. but I'm also like, if, I, yeah. If someone's like, count sheep while you try to fall asleep, I can't see it. Okay, I have a like, question. In, um, <laughs> The book oh, I can't, uh, on a quiet street, mm-hmm. like when they were doing like the house scenes when she's like sneaking into the house, I have it perfectly laid out in my brain. Like I'm literally sneaking watching her like walk me? up the stairs. Yeah, that's what, how I picture yeah. everything in my head. It's not what I like read. It's what like, I envisioned. Like sneaking in a like, closet. Can you remind me can we, what can happened? We go, can we go to a bookstore? For that? <laughs> I would love to smell I wanna, books. I do want to pick some up. I want to buy that book though. though yes, on a quiet it's street. so good. It's really good. I'm, do you I'm just almost done mine? with my book. I want to keep it. Okay. Yeah, that's how I am too. But I what if you don't like mind. it? Oh. Okay. T- um, Tim told me he wants you to send it to him. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> he was like, can you send it to me? I was like, well, it's Aaron's, but I'm sure it's she can. Bu- it's like 10 bucks on Amazon. Too. <laughs> I know. They have an allowance. <laughs> I gotta try to get into fiction again because yeah. I know that there is good. You stuff should start there. with the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Maybe think so. not. I want to get Dude, the, what the kind Da Vinci of like... Code. Have you ever read the that Da Vinci I read Code that in high school? Oh, that yeah, one was we read like that every other month. <laughs> that book like, yeah, made me it. a man. Like, or I don't know. Made it was me like a man. Robert it was Langdon. My first big Dan Brown. Robert Langdon's <laughs> the, the character. character. Yeah. Uh, da Vinci Code was like. It, I feel like that book was everywhere. It That's what those movies are based off of, right? Yes. Yes. Um, Love Angels and Demons. I read that one too. Oh, right. That book, though, when it was, I was just used to like still like very young adult fiction. That was like my first big boy like mm-hmm. book. 
And I remember like yeah, it all made fiction. sense. I love that. I book. remember also specifically that's where the phrase the Illuminati entered into pop culture. Oh, yes. What's what? The Illuminati. That book the is what put Code. it into pop culture. And now oh. you're I... telling me that all these QAnon fucks 100%. are reading the Da Vinci Code. No, they're not even reading the Da Vinci Code. <laughs> no, they don't just... even realize. But like before whatever year that came out, 2003, mm-hmm. you never fucking heard about the well, Illuminati. Yeah. It was always either the CIA or aliens or whatever. And so if I hear I someone talking the about the Illuminati as like a serious thing, I'm like, okay, this person just doesn't know what they're talking about. The Illuminati is not a thing that has been, I mean, it sure it was around in like the yeah. 1500s, but it's just like, it's Dan Brown popularized it with this, with this book. And now everyone thinks it's the real thing. It's just like, God, maybe. If what you, if they like recruited you? Would you join? It's not a thing that's happening <laughs> right now. Yeah, but like if Beyonce came up to you and was like, Hey Mike, I'm in the can Illuminati. I a, can I have a word? I would and say, then she's like, she brings you to her secret lair, and it is real. <laughs> or maybe Lady Gaga, if you want to be more realistic. Yeah, I, since you did meet her. I mean, sure, well, I think Beyonce I, and Jay Z are like the leaders. I oh, right, would join. Right. Yeah, oh yeah, of this thing that doesn't exist. <laughs> um, I like books that like are almost poetic too. Like The Alchemist. Have you? Everyone's read that, right? You know what? I, I have it. it. I, I have it too, it. but I've never read it. It is I'm just beautiful. never in the mood to like today's oh. the Alchemist Day. Where it's I... be- I've read it like three times. <gasps> it's because it it's just like beautiful. It'll be like should I put it on my list? Is it like he met the genie and he said, "Have you ever looked at this?" No, is no, it no. Very, like, is it really? Or is it like very biblical? Con- not biblical. I mean, it's written beautifully. Like the the translation of it is unbelievable. It's it it's like. Would we like it, though? I don't know. I, I would like to say it's about a kid who's in the desert and he meets a girl and then he goes on a journey. And it's just as he's going along the journey, he like learns a bunch of things by meeting different people. And it's, oh. I feel like we honestly might have this at the house. Like, it's all these I feel life like lessons. Read it. Like it'll be like and he saw a butterfly and the old man reminded him that seeing a butterfly is a good omen. And I'm, and now yeah. every time I see a butterfly, I'm like, oh, that's a good omen. It's yeah. just like a nice like. Everything in life is good and works out the way it's supposed to. It only has and... a 3.9 on Goodreads. Oh, let's... <laughs> I don't like Goodreads. Let's Goodreads. go on a website, Aaron. Come on, man. Dude, Goodreads is a bunch of like... Uh, no, it, it. it's, it's a bunch no, of like... No, it's, it's, you're moms. right. It's yes. a bunch of moms who are like, I didn't like this. This one was <laughs> fun. <laughs> Three stars. Also, and it's like, like you're leaving reviews that are like not really about the book. Then it's, it's like, like you don't have any ground you to don't stand like, on. Yeah, like someone literally wrote like a, left a one star. They were like, "There's too many lesbian things happening in this book." Are you serious? Yeah. Yes. Or like there was one. It was like this guy. This is so problematic. Like, don't say you have OCD if you just like need to brush your teeth a lot. I don't know something and like that. And also like in a Colleen Hoover book, they were like, "I it's can't like, get it's through a this guy's just like a walking red flag. He's doing all these terrible things." And it's like, okay, when you watch a show, yeah, are you like? Man's a red have you ever flag. Seen it's euphoria? like that's the point. It's <laughs> like, a fucking story. I don't it's understand not real. how people like this. Like there are supposed rent. to be bad people. <laughs> I know they're supposed to be if bad you're people. This soft, yeah. Like you're. Oh, there's a red flag in the book. I can't. Yeah. How like, are that's you alive? The point. How you're do you like get enjoying food? something that's not real. Like yeah. this is not. If it was like a real story and like you were so like darkened by it and you're like this is yeah, like that makes too sense. much for me and then it's like okay sure like i could get not wanting to know that like if you're watching the ted bundy documentary yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and you're like this is creepy but like for something that's completely but if you're watching like that j-lo movie what's called enough oh yeah imagine being like the guy he's I a red flag red fl- yeah no he's shit. like a, an abuser no shit he's a i red didn't flag. like that movie <gasps> there was a bad guy in it oh oh i was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like it's a great movie <laughs> No, no, but yeah, like, like these are the reviews review people leave. Like, mm, I don't know about that professor. Wait, should Snape I read character. a one star review yes. about the alchemist? Yes. Oh my the god. The one stars are so I would love funny. To, dude, the alchemist is like one no, of the most popular no spoilers, books though. in the world. Yeah, no spoilers. Sometimes person, but usually they say, I'm not gonna read this whole review because it's so long, but this is how it starts. My heart and I chatted and we agreed this book was short. My heart thinks it was also stupid. And after spending some time talking to the wind, I came to agree with my heart. Are they making fun of the book? Yes, that is how he talks okay, in the book. Okay, it's like, okay. listen to the wind because the wind like, will point witch you talking? in the direction. But it's not corny. It's just like beautiful. Oh, these all these reviews are like not like the Colleen Hoover reviews. They're like smart people reviews. Read one of what, what book was it? That was like the crazy one star. It was. um. No. I think it was things we never got over. No, it was. um romantic comedy maybe i just read one to the girl at the last book club i don't know things we never got over okay let me see i also like do you guys read biographies or autobiographies yeah like i love a celeb one memoir memoir yeah you know that pod their podcasters or tiktokers celebrity memoir book club yes i loved i thought i liked college i thought my friend is their manager 
Oh my god, cool. Yeah. I thought I liked Colin Jost's memoir, and then I watched Celebrity Memoir Book Club, and they just tore it apart, and they were like, this is the most like, AI-generated, like, non-funny <laughs> thing, and I was like, oh my god, I think they're actually right. Like, their their opinion about it like, changed, changed your... mine. Yeah. Oh. Born what? Standing Up by Steve Martin is really good. The Mel Brooks one is unbelievable. Mel it's, Brooks? Yeah. You know who he is? I think I'm getting confused with someone else. He's like the old Jewish guy that did a bunch of movies. He did Spaceballs. Oh, no. The producers. He was in Curb Enthusiasm. <laughs> Who am I thinking of? Mel Gibson? Yeah. Oh, God. Is he the one that was like screaming at someone? Yeah. That's, okay. No, not actor. that. We're not reading a Mel Gibson biography. That's what I was like, that's interesting that it's a good book. We need to get him on the pod. <laughs> Mel Gibson? <laughs> yeah, he needs um, to sit right here. I like Rick Rubin's new book, The Creative Act. Oh yeah, Rick Rubin. Is this know. nonfiction? Yeah. How often are we reading, Mike? Yeah, how often do you read? Since well, you don't watch shows and stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever seen you read a book. <laughs> I have a Kindle that okay. I spend a lot of time on. It's usually when I'm away on vacation, I'll read. Like I love that's that. my favorite is like planes, vacation, when I'm home with my family. Anytime I'm like away from my regular life is when I get my, most of my reading done. But I do have Audible that I got like six months ago. Blowing through books on Audible. I fucking love it. It's so much easier. Like listening. Yeah. Because like when you're reading a book, you can't be doing something else. Yeah. Right. You have to just it's like be... a podcast is on. Exactly. Yep. And uh, I, I just have so many fucking things to do all the time for me to like take an hour out of my day to just be like doing nothing else. But morning, pop on the headphones, do my whole morning routine, put the dishes away, make coffee, clean a little bit. I got an hour of a book done. Like yeah. it's the best. Highly, highly recommend audiobooks. Yeah. I like them for my walks, but I haven't really been doing that i usually just listen to i like podcasts. the like art or the act of reading yeah. i know i like it too like when i'm on a beach yeah. I, and i don't have a book i'm like okay well what are we doing here guys this is a waste of time <laughs> yeah because yeah. it's like that is when you go to a beach to me it's like that's that's what we're doing we're yeah. getting tan and reading books can you really look at my like phone stands, anyway stands though i'm sure they make some silly amazon like product thing. for like a beach yeah. read yeah, you can't look at your phone because it gets too hot. It's like too the bright. reflecting in so the it's sun. It's like nice. You can just yeah. It's also nice reading to a book because then you're like, I haven't looked at my phone in like an hour. Yeah, <laughs> it's really Kindles, crazy. Do you guys like your? Do you read? I things love on Kindles? my Kindle. Kindles though, I need to see like the chunk the of thick, how many yeah. pages, how the progress I'm at. They Even put though a you can percentage. tell me that yeah. ain't enough. Yeah. I need like because Kindle will also like shorten the size of a page, and so it makes it seem even longer. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like, I size. love a book, like a, a physical. physical book. I love the smell of books. Like if we go to a bookstore, like I will go through and just like paperback <laughs> specifically. Yeah, I, I know I hate a hardcover. Yeah, um, but I love a book. I love like bending the pages. Like Wait, you hate no. a hardcover? Hate a hardcover. It's oh. so much more. It's heavy. Emphatic. You're yeah. like heavy. I'm reading a book. Yeah, but like I want to like bend the pages around if I'm like moving my body. And, oh, like... I try and keep my books like as new looking as possible. I will never bend the little ear corner. Oh, I don't do that. Oh, do I'm that. not a I monster. <laughs> oh, little doggy ears. Well, you just said you like to fold the whole thing around. That seems pretty brutal. Yeah, that's just the outside. <laughs> it'll it'll go back. <laughs> yeah, it'll go back together. It'll be fine. It'll huh. stretch back. All right. Well, I'm sure people want to hear some recommendations. So, what are some books that have maybe impacted you or changed uh, your worldview or well, made you the person seven that you husbands are. of evelyn Hugo. that me and aaron that's Aaron. Like our favorite it's book such a good book no oh, it you're is not like, joking no no, no. no. it's like the, my favorite book i've ever read in my life it's, it's so, so good, good i think who's it's it so by good. colleen hoover uh no it's uh taylor jenkins reed do you think okay. i'd like it yes mm-hmm. i think I it's really like it's not corny it's not corny it's not like a okay porn i'll do it you should it's try not, there's it. No, wait, there's no sex in it? There uh, is. Is there? Yeah, I don't remember. What? Yeah. And she's had, it, this woman has seven husbands. Well, that's the whole, that's so the, the whole, whole thing. book is, it's like <laughs> Scott this woman who is like a Hollywood too elite, many. like she's so famous, like a Marilyn Monroe almost. And like the only thing people know about her is stuff that they've like read in the magazines. And she's like or old now. Seen, yeah. She's Hollywood? Yeah. This is America? Yeah, but it's, oh, it's made up. Oh, seven hu- husbands of Evelyn Hugo Every time I see that cover, I think it's 1700s. And it's like, oh, I'm Evelyn Hugo. Oh, no, 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 no. Just eating these. I thought it's like Bridgerton shit. No. No, I would never read that. (laughs) Yeah. And so she is like this woman that's like a mystery, but everyone like thinks they know everything about her because they like read everything in the news. And she's like had seven husbands. So then basically the book is like a retelling. Now that she's older, she like gives this um, journalist a one on one. And she's like, I'm going to tell you everything and you're going to write this book about my life. That's the truth. And it's really good. I really like it. Mm. 
Yeah. Mm. I think you'd like it. And it's turning into a movie. Oh, yeah. So that makes it even more exciting. So that's really fun. Which will probably suck compared to the book. But it's we'll very good. Yeah. It's always like my, I have like a t- tough, nothing can really beat it. I know. It's that's the only book I, I have as five stars. I know. I got a little jaded after. I was like, nothing's going to be as good. Um, I have like three or four, but like, I might the also come with history. warnings where you may not. But the thing is, like, some people may not like the books that of I course. recommend. And sometimes yeah. I always feel like I, I hate being the guy. Like, I like to read books that other people don't. But I do <laughs> like because these are books, though, that challenged me so much that I ended up liking a lot. And they changed the way that I thought about fiction and my patience for other shit. Hmm. OK, first one, Secret History by Donna Tart. She's the best writer, I think, of our time. It's a na- she's a national treasure. And I think that book is fantastic. Also, Less Than Zero by Brett Easton Ellis. I think um, really iconic book of like the 80s and uh, culture in LA and stuff. It's awesome. It's so easy to read. And like the style of it is really wicked and great. Also, On the Road by Jack Kerouac is a phenomenal book as well. That That one, it will change like the way I think like you go about and like seeing the world and traveling and music and all of that. I think about it all the time. Though who knows, maybe controversially, there might be some stuff in that book. If you're like a woman, you might be like, I don't know if I really like it. And then The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugene. What's that about? Much people couldn't get laid. No, it's about a group of I think six sisters, and they all live across the street from the like. It's the the book is told from the perspective of all the boys in the neighborhood who were in love with these like the the Lisbon sisters who like all lived in this house together, and they were very like sheltered and like protected, like away from the world and stuff. Hmm. And it's all like this like final year. That kind of sounds good. Wow. Actually, Demora, he the way I hopefully I'm saying his last name right. Eugene Des E U G I. I'm gonna get it wrong. The way he writes is just in a, such a sense of like beauty and illustration. Like I fall in love with the writing of people sometimes oh. more than I do the actual plot, and that entertains me more because I'm Wait, just. Wait, that's like, so interesting. I got some questions today that were um, like, "Would you rather for books?" And that was like one of them. It said, "Would, would you rather be well written? Would, would you rather, you rather the story be great read or it's a book well- with terrible writing but a good story, or a book with a terrible story but good writing? Terrible, terrible story, story but good, good writing. writing. Oh, no, I'm opposite. Me too. <laughs> writing, writing to <laughs> me is like, like the book's yeah, like, writing it could like it's, come it's, in like a text message with no punctuation, and I'm like, and I'd be like, what's gonna happen? Love it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no punctuation throughout the whole book. Yeah. I'm like, what's she gonna happen? She came home and her husband was cheating on her, and then she pulled out a gun and yes, I'm like, what's gonna happen? I can't put it down. Interesting. Because it's like music to me, or like I really am like I get I like sorry I get off on good writing like oh when they I, I just like heard a phrase especially very very oh yeah that, I get off sure. on good writing I mean that that was just like I don't know would you consider that good writing no <laughs> the one, I think it's what was a- the one you were reading on the plane uh bright lights big city yeah like that I read a few pages of that the way that he just like turns a phrase is like oh that's yeah. great. Mm. Like he calls cocaine like Bolivian Swift. marching powder. I'm just yeah, like, Bolivian dude, that's marching. So oh, sick. I literally have to pick up my phone and be like, "What is Bolivian marching?" <laughs> well, powder? no, it's cocaine. No, I know. Oh, what? No, I didn't. But I feel like I would. Well, I only know because he just said it. Oh, oh, uh, well, no. But, but like, he, if I was reading it, I'd have to be like, "What no, is he talking about?" No, he doesn't say about? it's cocaine. He says, "I can feel the you you can feel the Bolivian marching powder racing through your or your heart palpitations," and you're like, "Wow, I that's, love that shit." Yeah, that's well, what. See, I don't. That's I'd be like. like I yeah. like. I'd be like, just say what you mean. No, no, but it's, no. it's like poetic. It's like it's so. See, you I feel making... like you would like Taylor Swift. Do you have you? Do you? She's, be, she's seen it. The song that's like, when I was thirteen and I had yeah, a yeah. boyfriend. It's that like just make up a song, and it's like me Taylor showing Taylor Swift to someone for okay, the first time. Okay, but like time. she would write the Bolivian marching she powder. Would. She would. 100%. No, she wouldn't. Yes, Taylor she Swift would. Is the most Basic are fucking you lyrics. High? Of all are you wrong. kidding me? That's wrong. Yeah, you Mike. are wrong. Like, no, no, no. Okay, I, in you the know same what? way, in the same way, Bob Dylan is very basic and literal. There's no, we're no. not. There's nothing. There's no deep metaphors here. Yes, it's, are you kidding me? All of her writing is metaphoric. No, it's ha- not. Look, it's so on the. This is it's so, so surface level. No, stop talking. I have a Shakespeare or Taylor Swift quiz pulled up. Yep. I mean, right this now. is gonna be a fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Hold on. Can can I just play this because this is. While you're pulling that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Any day. <laughs> what? There's some new... T- I'm getting into some new Taylor Swift. This. Shows. 
<laughs> I've never seen this. It's really funny. It's like what's out with Lucy Taylor Swift for the first time. It sounds like it's just yeah, funny. This is, this is what I hear. This is like Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Like, yeah. Okay. Let's do Shakespeare yeah, like, and Taylor no. Swift. God. Okay. Let's see. Okay. This is like very on theme because sure. Shakespeare. I know. Yeah. That's why I pulled it up. I was like, this would be the perfect episode. Yeah. There's a theory that Shakespeare was not Taylor real. Swift. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Do you miss the rogue who coaxed you into paradise and left you there? Shakespeare or Taylor Swift? <laughs> Say that again. Do you miss the rogue who coaxed you into paradise and left you there? That's Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. You're right. Yeah. My tongue will tell the anger of my heart, or else my heart concealing it will break. That's Shakespeare. That's iambic pentameter. Good job. Okay, you nerd. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what iambic pentameter is it? Just the way that it's the phrase of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, iambic pentameter is a thing. Iambic pentameter. Yes, no, it's the so iambic that, pentameter. It's, a, a, it's A-A-B-B or B-B-B-A-A. Like, read it, like read C- it off. C- I, don't even, I don't even know <laughs> if that just, was iambic pentameter. I just wanted to say that's that. That's just like saying, like, that's I a stanza. Like, yeah, it, no, I know. Just being a dick. I'm being a dick. I'm like, God, you don't even fucking jump on my throat. Well, I'd believe it. I'm like, oh, okay. Just doing it before the comments do. Past the curses and cries, beyond the terror in the nightfall. Taylor Swift. That sounds like it might be Shakespeare, but it might be Taylor Swift. It's not that big of a line either way, but I'm going to go Shakespeare. Taylor Swift. Okay. This is for him. No. In black ink, my love may still shine bright. Obviously Taylor Swift. Nope. Shakespeare. Really? Bitch. I mean, that's props to Taylor Swift. I thought she wrote something that Shakespeare wrote. Say, read that one again. Um. <laughs> in one. my black ink. In black, in black ink, my love may still shine bright. That's Shakespeare. Yeah, it's actually Takashi Six Nine. <laughs> <laughs> Takashi Six Nine. Or I, I, I don't know any Shakespeare, so I don't really even. know I know, like, but what it's interesting because if yeah. you think it's like good, you'll say Shakespeare probably. No, I'm just trying to hear like the voice of the person okay. if I can hear it as lyrics or not. Now my eyes leak acid rain on the pillow where you used to lay your head. That's for sure, Taylor Swift. Shakespeare. Acid rain did not exist during Shakespearean times, dude. Oh, good point. Okay, well, that's just scientific, Taylor Swift. (laughs) I'd meet you where the spirit meets the bone in a faith-forgotten land. That sounds like Shakespeare. Taylor Swift. Wow. I, For the record, I don't like Shakespeare either. Okay. You say that now? No, no. I've always said this. I do not like. Matt's told me to read like something before. The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns and puzzles the will and makes us rather bear like those that ills Romeo we and have Juliet movie where it's Leonardo DiCaprio and they're saying the Shakespeare. I can't. Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. yeah. Romeo's take me somewhere we can be but alone. See, the light thing. beyond her window breaks. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Like, what are you Arise saying? Arise from the sun speaking and waking Yeah, like it's so bad. No, when I had that, he those assignments, I'd be like, shut up. Yeah. I'm over it. It's yeah. beautiful. He like, doth what are they valid. saying? <laughs> yeah. I, it's like not It's like not English. And then your teacher's literally like, what are they saying? I'm like, you tell me. Yeah, I'm like, I don't fucking know. I wasn't raised in Shakespearean yeah. language. To be or not to be. Whether what is it? Tis nobler in the to mind. Whether to tis suffer, nobler in the mind to, to suffer, suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous mis- fortune, fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles it and sounds like you're trying to like a tarot card. And, this it's is why AI. I have to stop watching it, it, Game would of you the rather? <laughs> Yeah, I, that TikTok by the okay. way is hilarious. Moving on, yeah. to die, moving to sleep, on to good writing. To sleep, a chance to dream. I there's the rub. For in that sleep, huh? death. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. I don't like either Shakespeare or Taylor Swift. No, but I, I said it. I think that if you just like read her lyrics without looking at the songs, like some of them, you'd be like, oh, okay, like she is sure. a poet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that there is a reason why this TikTok has five hundred and ninety-seven. It's because, because it's funny. It's just funny. No, it's people it's like hilarious. me that relate to it and no, it's like, no, oh, I, finally, I, I think it's hilarious yes. as well. And also, like, no offense, but I think that you're only being served that because of us, probably. And yeah. majority of the people commenting on it and liking it are Our Swifties. Taylor, yeah, that's fine. Because we all know it's like so. I don't want to take away. I get it. You okay. guys like her. Congratulations. Should we do a couple more? Don't no, act for like- sure. sure. <laughs> no. I'll do one more. No. Okay, we'll do one more. He doesn't like this bit. Well, one more. I, I, sometimes I get anxiety about choosing between two things and how it's one thing coming after a next thing. I'm like, okay, so if the last one was, ta- is going to be two You're Taylors? You're still and- talking Shakespearean y- yeah, over just, here. I don't know what's go, happening. Go ahead. Let's okay. hear the next one. Your touch brought forth an incandescent glow, tarnished but so grand. That's Shakespeare. Taylor Swift. Damn. That's a Taylor Swift lyric? Yep, from the song Ivy. Maybe you need Let to- me read it one more time. <laughs> 
Your t- how does it go in the song? I, I still don't think it. it's good. I'm your just t- saying it's like okay. We know we don't think it's good. Okay. Your touch brought forth an incandescent glow, <sighs> tarnished but so grand. She literally is a she writes poems like that's what she does, yeah. and then she makes I songs get out it. of them. I, it just doesn't resonate with me. Ooh. I'm done. I'm done I with feel this. as though if we were doing it with like, is this Taylor Swift or the Mars Volta? <laughs> <laughs> Then, <laughs> yeah, we should do that. Then, like, I'm well, that wouldn't really work because he knows all their lyrics. Yeah, no, I do. But, Honestly, if it was, but like, like, you know what I mean? If like, it was I, Taylor Swift or Kurt Vonnegut, I would love to do that. Okay. That one I would be able to tell you in then a you, second. Well, that's not the point. That's not the point, Mike. Like, because you say that you hate Shakespeare too. So right, it's like and, two wait, people so you hate. You hate Shakespeare and you can't tell the difference. So does that mean that you don't like Taylor Swift? No, no. Boom, my, they're both just Got good em. writers. Yes. Like I'm like I don't like Shakespeare, but I can understand what he's saying. I just don't is like any of that. Stuff. Poetic. I don't. I, to me, that is not the type of poetry that resonates with me. Okay. When the twin flamed bruise. Wait, did the twin? <laughs> did the twin flame? flame did the twin faint? <laughs> did the twin flamed bruise paint you too? No. Oh. Fucking in a car, <laughs> shooting <laughs> heroin, saying, saying controversial, controversial things just for the hell of it. Or, That's um, a good song. I was never good at telling jokes, but the punchline goes, I'll get older, but your lovers stay my age. Okay. Fuck Jake Jill. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's like something that really does. You liked Dear John. I did like that. I like the sound of that song. I don't know if I like the lyrics. No, you did. You said so. Oh, okay. <laughs> he said I really um, resonated with these he lyrics. He said, I love this song. Wait, do you want to hear a funny thing? Um, this popped up on my suggested. Only Carly will like this. Popped up on my suggested on Instagram, and there's a restaurant called Dear John in LA. Let me find my group chat. And it's like closing down huh. at the end of this month. <laughs> but it's so funny because in the caption, it's, it's called Dear John's. Mm-hmm. And it says... But its days are numbered and have been since 2019, which is like, I'm like, oh, it's days are numbered. And like Taylor's album's coming out too. And like yeah. John Mayer's days are numbered. I huh. thought that was funny. Interesting. I know. Interesting. Her power. The restaurant's closing. <laughs> yeah. Because of speaking yeah. out. Taylor Jordan. I, there's a book that I like that I've I've read probably like six times. It's probably times. dumb and uh, not poetic. Well, no, it, it's literally a <laughs> poetry book. And I, I like. Is I'll, it Charles just, Bukowski? No, it's Is called, it Shel Silverstein? <laughs> Charles Bukowski, I did like until I saw an interview of him. Like, I read uh, The Postman and Factotum because they were recommended to me. He's a great writer. Really, really depressed. Uh, And then he also had a book of poetry and his poetry kind of fucking rules. But then on like, I was like, I wonder what this guy like sounds like and looks like. And then I saw a video of him on YouTube and like it's him in his old age and he's like getting interviewed by someone and there's like his wife or a woman there. And he's just like kind of chain smoking cigs and like drinking. And then the woman says something and he just goes, shut the fuck up. And he like pushes her what? and like <laughs> kicks her off the couch. And he's just and I'm just like, Jesus, like this is not a character. Like he's just a bad. And like, oh, my God, he was just like a That's woman scary. abuser and like a bad dude and an alcoholic and like a piece of shit. And there's an interview where he just like yeah, his kicks this woman. Dark. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't know if I want to be reading Wait, stuff it, by this guy. it was his wife that he did that to? I think so. That, so this other book that I was talking about is The Prophet by this guy Khalil Gibran. And that book is basically like each chapter is a different topic. So it's kind of like it influences. God, um... <laughs> It'll be like, speak to us about food. And then he'll have in the best quotes you ever Just heard about. find t- episode topics in that. Oh, true. I should look at his. <laughs> yeah, but it's like books or children. Yeah. So like uh, the one that about children that I like is. Your children are not your children. They're the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. Oh. And then he talks about how, like, you can't control your kids because even though you think that they're yours, they're actually, they just belong to life. They are just life and the universe expressing itself. And if you try to control your kids, it's like trying to control the universe, which you can't do. Um, one more. Some of you say joy is greater than sorrow and others say, nay, sorrow is greater. But I say to you, they are inseparable. Together they come, and when one sits <laughs> alone with you at your board, remember that the other is asleep upon your bed. That's true. Yeah. I do like that one. <laughs> Joy and yeah. But like when you're when one is with you, that means the other one's asleep in your bed. So like if you're it's like feeling waiting. But like, Everything so if passes. But it's like if you're feeling yes, like if you're feeling sad, just remember that like, you know, Joy there is is always Joy. on the horizon. Exactly. Yeah. 
So I, this I like two shall pass. It's always darkest before the dawn. <laughs> Wait, who is this guy again? Khalil you know who said Gibran. That? He was like Taylor a Swift. Middle Eastern poet from like the early 1900s. The Dark Knight. Oh, it's um, always darkest before the dawn. What about like chicken soup for the soul? <laughs> Anyone read oh, those? Oh yeah, those chicken soup so for the soul. I know. Well, there were some good ones that weren't sad. Oh yeah, I think, some right? fucked me up. Chicken soup for the soul for kids. Chicken uh-huh. soup for the soul for teens. Yeah. Are they still yeah. pumping yeah, out those like, books? Yeah, they have like moms. Like they have like all. Were they just they have chicken soup for the influencer? <laughs> 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 Can someone design that? <laughs> that cover? Is... Wait, what is what? It's like <laughs> stories, right? Within them. Yes. Or... A user. Uh, yeah. Some or user submitted like uh. Yeah, people would send in stories to be printed. The influencer one is well, like, I was canceled. That's what was the first so one? So funny. Chicken soup for the teenage soul. I think it was just chicken soup for the soul. It's like the first uh, one. That's ever. the first one, and then they made one for kids. The teenage the soul. The kids one. There was one about that kid in the in the bus, and he had like the rope at the back of the bus, and he like tied it to like a tree. And I'll, there was an accident that happened, and this kid got thrown out of oh the bus, and he God. died. And they were the football team. There was also one where like the kid befriends like an alien online. That one was kind of intense. Chicken Online. soup for the soul. Believe in angels. 101 inspirational stories of hope, miracles, and answered prayers. Were these like religious? Yeah, I think so. It sounds religious. They were like religious adjacent. They, Some of them look real religious. Chicken soup for the soul. Um, the book, I, I just wanted to circle back on the book that I read when I was young that changed my entire life was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, I've heard of that book. It, The first millionaire I ever met when I was like 19 he was like my friend's older brother and he made like millions of dollars on the internet and I've never met a millionaire before and oh I was like dude help me and he's like I read this book when I was your age it changed my life I read that book when I was like 19 Are you changed my life <laughs> no but <laughs> working on it is it like so what it didn't really change your life <laughs> well no it's I'm kidding I'm kidding it, it just like helps <laughs> uh it just helped me like shape how I view the world and how you view like success and how you can achieve things is a science that you can follow what's the book yeah is that like the book's plot or what is the it, it's a non it's a non-fiction book. no i know Why but like what's the like uh ladies <laughs> chicken I'm chicken speaking here. chicken poop for the uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you girl rich yeah. is this guy in napoleon hill when he was a kid he was like born with like a speech impediment and like i think he like couldn't yeah. walk or something but he basically studied every successful person that he could find for 30 years so he interviewed like presidents and rockefeller and rothschild and like this is in the early 1900s he interviewed the most successful people in america for 30 years basically to understand is it is there a scientific way to be successful at something and he condensed it all into this book which is how to be successful in whatever you want to do like if you want to you know be a parent you want to be a millionaire you want to be a tv show whatever and like one of the things that you're supposed to do is write a letter to the universe where you put on paper your name the date what you want so like let's say i want to uh live in a million dollar house with a wife and kids so you write that down and then you have to say what are you going to give up in exchange for it and it has to be something that I can't remember exactly what it is, but it has to be like something you have to like put an effort for it and you have to write that exchange and uh, you like fold that up and keep it to yourself, whatever, and you read it. Okay. You eat it and swallow it. No, but like <laughs> I found on the internet, Bruce Lee had did this exact same thing where he said, and I don't know if he read the book or not, and I, I don't know if there's interviews, but like it said, my name is Bruce Lee and I want to be an American action film star in exchange. I will dedicate my body, mind, and soul to performing my art, and I will give every ounce of my energy to perform this action, and then it's he became Bruce Lee. That's manifestation, too. Kind yeah. of. That's, that's like, like law of attraction. Well, manifestation, I think, is a little bit like woo-woo, like, let's just hope that it happens, versus, like, well, taking that's like action. Well, like intentional it is, thinking, yeah. though, yeah. too. And the Jim Carrey thing, too, where he wrote yeah. himself the $10 million check for, you know about the story that he told on Oprah? No. Jim Carrey, he was, like, broke as fuck, he moved to Hollywood, was just, like, trying to make it as an actor, and then was sitting on like the top of the hill somewhere and he wrote a he pulled out his checkbook and he wrote a check to himself that said uh for acting services 10 million dollars and put the date five years from that day and he kept that in his wallet for five years and it was like five years to the day he got the check for uh dumb and dumber or something and oh then, like, then he became yeah 
Well, so I like stuff like that where it's like helps you navigate the yeah. world. And like when I think about books, I think about them as like ways to help me get s- stronger and smarter and whatever. But Those are more like an educational yes. like yeah tool. Yeah, I just like a plot. I know, yeah. I know, because yeah. I know that there's a whole the, world about yeah, it. And like the, I know the, that there's beauty stories in it. Make my world a little bit more colorful. I yeah. don't know. I see the world like I don't know. And what? it's fun because like I love the... reading them like together because then mm. we can like talk about it and mm-hmm. like be like, oh my god, can you believe this? Yeah. And it's just like a like well, something I've that makes sense to you doesn't make sense with... to someone else. Or yeah. Yeah. like why did... did she do that? Yeah. Or oh, like the plot the was chapter. twisted for someone but not for someone else. Yeah. Like, I was expecting just like that a to story. Happen. Yeah. Well, are there any books that you would recommend besides Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo? That's it. No, I'm That's kidding. the only. No, come on. Um, There's some ones that have been in your. Uh... I honestly feel like Radium Girls is a, an amazing book to read, and it's so interesting, and what it reads that? like a a plot. It's um uh, basically these people. I think it was like right during World War One or two. Can't remember. But they worked in these factories where they were paint. They would paint watches for soldiers, um, and they didn't have glow-in-the-dark watches, obviously, so they used radium so they could see the time. Oh, that's And insane. they didn't know at the time, but the people who owned these factories would be like, okay, everyone, like, to do a precise painting, dip it in the radium, or lick it, dip it in the radium, paint it, lick, dip, paint. That was, like, the whole thing. radium is radioactive. <laughs> yeah, but they, but they didn't know it then. It, is this a fiction book? No, no it's, it oh, really happened. Oh, and so geez. all these it's girls. D- dairy Girls? Radium Girls. <laughs> radium Girls. <laughs> dairy oh. Girls, like the TV show on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. Dairy Girls. And That's basically what it's doing. like, oh. you're like, I didn't know that was the plot of the show. <laughs> yeah. It was literally like 14 year old girls and like all these different ages. And they started, their bones started to like melt, disintegrate. <laughs> yeah. Like I remember the first one. This is very distracting, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. The first one, this girl went to the dentist because she was having like dental problems. And the dentist was like brushing her teeth and her jaw just like fell off. Oh, oh, like fell apart. And that, that's basically what happens. Your bones start to disintegrate and they tried What's to happening? like, they tried to like sue the radium place. And it was just like this whole thing. It's really good. It's just really interesting. There's also a movie adaptation. It was fucking horrible. Do not mm-hmm. watch it. I feel like that's like every, but this was movie. so much worse. Except the sisterhood of the traveling pants was good. <laughs> Goldfinch like, though, Potter. why Donna Tartt was not good. Oh, yeah. Like the movie. The like book's the, I, really good. It won the, the Book set. of the Year award. Yeah, and, that's like uh, any. All movies are just worse than the books. No, the Virgin Suicides, Suicides, I think, and the book are like hand in hand, perfectly beautifully Ooh. done. Okay, yeah. That's good Do to you know. like one? I'm trying to think. Well, I haven't read it, but I'm thinking of Ending Things, the movie by Charlie Kaufman. <laughs> I fucking love that movie. It's on Netflix. It's unbelievable. I haven't read. the Is book. Is it a book? Oh, okay. Well, that's the thing. I know. I read I like, the. I read the book and saw the movie. I. I ended up a big fan of Charlie Kaufman. I was felt so disconnected from all of it. Oh. Like I didn't like. I didn't like yeah, any just, of it. You're not smart enough to get it. It's fine. Did you? So you didn't read Fifty Shades of Grey, but did you watch the movies? No, I haven't seen any <laughs> one thing of that. Awful. Like, were the Harry Potter movies good? Or people still like? Oh, the books I do yeah. really like the Harry Potter movies. That's a good one. I feel like that also was Hunger funny. Games was really good. Oh, I feel like yes. all the series Twilight is like. Twilight Camp sucked. good, dude. No. But at the, but at Wait, the time, was Twilight yeah. a book before the movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I read Twilight. I read Twilight and New Moon, and then I never read Eclipse. I, oh, I read all. Saw a TikTok that was like top ten lines from Twilight. Have you seen this TikTok? No. no. I've never seen it. I literally thought it was AI generated the lines <laughs> from this movie. Where, Where you, you been, been Loka? Loka? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> and then you Loka? name my daughter after the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> These are real quotes from this movie. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's I remember silly. reading it. It's I didn't silly. think anything of good. it, but people were like, "This is a terrible author," and I was like, "It is." I just I, that's <laughs> the thing. Like, I just geez. like the plot. Yeah. I just like the God, plot. I'm such a hater. I think it's similar to like movies. Some people like it aesthetically, like, "Oh, it's filmed so well," and the lighting. And I don't really pay attention to that stuff. I just like the plot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like it could be low budget, but if the plot's good, I'm like, "Yeah, what's gonna yeah. happen?" I just watched. There's a book called um, "The Last Thing He Told Me" that's been really popular, and they just made it into a TV show with Jennifer Garner. And I didn't read the book, but I watched the show. And and I like enjoyed it, but so many people I've seen everywhere are like, "This is so cheesy!" Like, yeah, you blah, just never blah, would know. And I'm like, "Oh, I bet. Of course, I'm sure the book is better." Yeah, but if you only see the movie, it's probably just like, "Oh, yes. it's so good." I just yeah. want a good fucking thriller. That's what I'm. I'm in the mood for. On I a want quiet something. street. I'm like, 
See, that's, I, I feel like it's so hard to please you, though. Like, I'm nervous that you're just going to be like, eh. Quiet Street sat. I read some of the reviews, and it oh. seems up my alley, and I'm kind of okay. excited Jurassic to Park. see. Jurassic Park? Is that movie better than the book? <laughs> well, that's what Didn't I just bring this up in the last yeah. podcast yeah. that I want to read Jurassic Park? Yeah. yeah. I just, I'm just curious <laughs> what that's like. I don't know. Oh, so, A Clockwork Orange. I loved that way more than the book. The movie? But I also read it when I was like 13, so maybe my tastes have changed. You ever seen that movie, Clockwork Orange? I don't think so. It was kind of like fucked up. Oh, yeah, incredibly yeah, fucked up. Very, 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 very dark. Oh, no. Maybe not for this audience. American Psycho is really good, too. That one's really good. That's Have you read The Secret History yet, though? No, we'll go to the bookstore now. Okay, cool. Can you go get it? The Barnes & Noble in my hometown just closed down. <gasps> And it was like, that was like my favorite bookstore. Like, I'll you didn't never... have any like mom and pops? Oh, yeah. Like half price yeah. books and stuff. Yeah, we used to go to those. Oh, half but... price books. I want to get the the Rose and Thorns, a game of Court of Thorns. Court of Thorns. Court of Thorns. Yeah. 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 What? I've been hearing a lot about that. Me too. That. And that's the thing. Like, I don't like fantasy at all, but people are like, no, you'll like it though. But the first line is like, the beast in the forest. <laughs> I'm like, oh. yeah, because you didn't like Harry Potter, right? I just never really read it. Not because of fantasy. Yeah. I just like never read it for some reason. No. Did you read reason. The Hunger Games? Mm hmm. I loved that. Yeah, me too. I fucking loved The Hunger the Games. Books? Yeah. yeah. And the movies are really good mm -hmm. too. The movies are so good. Have you ever read like Catcher in the Rye at all? Like um, in school. Yeah, I think in school. What's the one with Lenny and George? Mice and Men. Oh, yeah, Mice and Men. That was big Did in I school. Did I hurt the bunny? Or whatever it is. <laughs> the mice. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut, you guys ever read him? Uh, Slaughterhouse Five. Yeah, oh, but I don't like, think I don't that. think I've ever read Slaughterhouse Five. I know Fahrenheit Four Fifty One by Ray Bradbury. That, no, I like Kurt that Vonnegut one. is from Indiana. I know. Uh, there's a collection of short stories called Welcome to the Monkey House. Okay, one of the best things you'll ever read in your life. Welcome. Let me put it on my Goodreads hey, because it's short stories too. You can kind of just yeah, like get pick and it. choose. Yeah, but he like, also wrote. He write Cat's Cradle and like yes. Hocus Pocus. Cats yes. in the cradle in the sieve. No, spoon. That's, that would be my Little recommendation. Blue. What he's, is it called? He's a, he's a fiction author. I could uh, also welcome to the monkey house. Also the bell jar by Sylvia Plath. Oh, also, um, she, she died from carbon monoxide poisoning. Who did? Sylvia, Sylvia Plath. Plath. Really? She killed herself. Yeah, but on the podcast we were oh, saying we she said that she burned herself alive in the oven. I know. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, how did she do it? She turned on the gas of the oven, not the heat, and just put her head in and it. just put her head uh, in it to, to breathe in the fumes. Oh, we said it's so, wrong. so many people were commenting, and what? I was like, oh. there was a funny joke by the comedian. Uh, her name is, I think, Morgan Murphy. This is a four point one three on Goodreads. She was like, uh, you know how I know electric cars don't work? I sat in my garage for four and a half hours trying to kill myself, and nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> Because electric cars don't emit yeah. carbon. Yeah. yeah. No, it's um, I don't like reading books by people who have killed themselves. I don't want to read Dave, I, David Foster he, Wallace. I don't want to read David Foster Infinite Wallace. Infinite Jest. Because he didn't have the answers. If he fucking did that, you know, I whatever, you got to do what you got to do. But he had do. just the most intense <laughs> mind. But but like, do I want to be putting the, the thoughts Those of thoughts. someone who had that mind into my mind? Yeah, but like, don't what, people, even with that book, don't they have to buy one that's like a supplemental book that like tells you what's going on? For which one? Infinite Jest? Yeah. The Infinite Jest is a whole bunch of footnotes that you have to read on top of. Oh, that is it, too it, much. Dude, Infinite yeah. Jest is one of the hardest books. I've never been able to finish it. Oh I've only God. known two people in my life who've ever been Jesus. able to. Why is it just not like... It is It is one of the hardest books. But like, what is hard about it? It's just not um, sentences that make how sense? Not the cover. dense it is, the characters... It's just, it's exhausting. It is a stairmaster of a book. You feel like you're almost... It's more intense than like reading the bible like oh jesus geez. Like, what? Like, go, it's hard. Go, for, go for it everybody it's always so funny you hear people like oh when they hear that like i'm gonna read infinite jest for sure no, no that problem. sounds like a nightmare yeah. stare master of a book <laughs> no thank you yeah. those are two words no. i don't like. but i do want to finish it sometime in my lifetime to say that like i did it and like you i do know that once you've finished it and like you understand it it's actually like the best thing you they could have ever read so there's one book i've always wanted to read have you heard of this book godel escher and bach you know that book uh, yeah, yeah, I have it's it in my Amazon like cart, actually. super complicated, too, and you have to, like, know calculus in order to read the book. But oh, apparently really? It's like the, I'm not going to buy that now. Yeah, I think this it's, like, a crazy... This like not fun. Um, but what I, so the other thing I was going to say that I do like about nonfiction, which, again, I know I need to get into fiction, but the idea that what a book is, is, like, some guy, let's say it was uh, Marcus Aurelius, okay, the Stoic the guy wrote one of the stoic books he 
was the king of Rome, like the emperor of the biggest empire in the world, number one best, like most powerful dude in the world. He lived however many hundreds, thousand years ago, whatever. Whatever was in his brain is like now in my brain. Yeah, that is weird. Which is like I, insane I get what you're saying. that like someone can just take their thoughts put it out down. of their head, put it onto a thing with like squiggly lines on a on a piece of paper. And then I have all of his thoughts in my head. Do you think people will think that in a couple thousand years about like TikTok? Or Colleen Hoover? <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, this Alex Earl said this and now I'm reading that. Wait, I want to give you Claudia's book to read. Claudia Oshry? Yeah. Uh, I'll read that. Oh, yeah. What's it called? Girl Boss? I feel like that's probably no. funny. <laughs> Girl <laughs> Boss. Or like when you read like, uh, you know, the Walter Isenson book about Einstein and you can. Well, no, you keep saying, you know, I haven't known a single thing <laughs> you've been talking about the whole time. <laughs> Walter Isaacson, the guy who wrote Steve Jobs' biography. Yes, okay. He I've also wrote one about Einstein. I think he wrote, ghost wrote Claudia's. <laughs> <laughs> What's her book called again? Uh, I think girl it's just boss. Girl with No Job. Oh, oh girl, girl with No, no job. job. That's yeah. what it is. But it's right. called something else. I'm getting like, too nerdy. Girl with I'm no, sorry. Something Girl with No Job. I don't know. It's called Thinking Girl, girl with No by Claudia Job. Oshry. Book. And I then know, it, I'm just trying to help people. It'll give yeah. you like a little like it's like a because obviously it's nonfiction, but it'll give you like a segue into fiction. I feel like Matt would be so funny reading that because I feel like you would just be like, "That's a lie. That's a lie." <laughs> For a Claudia's book? Yeah. Uh, can she send it to me? Do you think, <laughs> Why should I me? buy it, or do you think Claudia would be offended if I were like, "You can't afford twelve dollars." I know, but I just want to be like, thanks for the book. Why don't you just buy it and then you like send it to her to sign and then she'll send it back to you and it's like she sent it to you. Right. All right. Oh, yeah. It's at the Barnes and Nobles. It's right next to Josh Peck's book. Is it's it actually? In, in the Jewish excellence se section. There... There's no, no. I was, like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I was like, that is a sleigh. Yeah. Do you guys have Goodreads <laughs> accounts we should le link in the in the? Thing? Yeah, I've got a Goodreads. Sure. Oh, I don't even know what mine looks like. or I don't know how to link it, but mine it's just my name. We'll put a link in the description, and uh, we'll see you next week, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye, guys. Thank you so much.